Hi, so in video 1277 we used this, which is alginate moulding powder, to cast this, which is a copy of my hand. Now, I didn't cast a copy of my hand because I'm obsessively interested in a copy of my hand with the victory sign. I did that because uh, I'm doing this project for a friend of mine who has a difficulty in getting gloves to fit. So I thought it would show him a process where he can make his own gloves and then he's actually going to have a perfect fit. So I'm halfway through the process of showing you how to make latex gloves using this. But obviously this stuff could be used to cast anything because the joys of it here are it picks up the detail like you wouldn't believe. Now I use plaster of Paris, but you could equally use resin. So obviously making pattern parts is just a, a piece of cake with something like this because the detail is fantastic. Now you can't make uh, lots of them. You can only make one. This is good enough for one mold because it actually breaks up. I mean, it's basically seaweed, okay? But once you've got this permanent cast, you obviously can do a lot of things with that to be able to use it again and again and again. And the method I'm going to show you to make gloves is exactly the method you would use to make uh, another mould out of latex rubber that could be used hundreds of times. So as a technique, it's tremendously useful. For making gloves, it's awesome. But, and for making objects as a single object, I mean, I just love that, hey? It's an awesome technique, but you can adapt it to do a whole myriad of things following the same routine. So if you didn't watch 1277 to see how that was cast, knock yourself out and go back and have a look at it because it really is easy. What we're going to do now is make some gloves out of this. The beauty of casting a plaster of Paris, and there were suggestions of casting it in cement, making a clay mould, all that sort of stuff. The beauty of plaster of Paris is when you've left it to dry and we dip it in some latex, so here's some latex rubber. What will happen is the moisture in the latex rubber will get sucked into the plaster of Paris and it will leave a layer of latex on the outside of the plaster of Paris you've just made. The thickness of that layer relates directly to the amount of time that you leave it dipped in the plaster of Paris. So if you leave it dipped into the plaster of Paris for a day or so and come back, you can have this really thick, chunky layer that will make a mould that you can use a couple of hundred times. Obviously we're going to make a glove with this, so we just need to dip it in there for a minute or so, hold it in there, pull it out, it'll get its layer of latex. So what I've got here is some latex rubber and a container big enough to take my hand. So I'm going to chop this top off, fill it with latex. So both the latex and the alginate are freely available on Amazon, incidentally. So you can just go ahead and buy it from there, and if you have a latex allergy, well, pretty much you're screwed, you shouldn't be doing it. Then all you do, like I say, is take your plaster of Paris mould that you've just, uh, model that you've just made, dip it in there, and then we give that a little bit of time. Just a, you know, minute or so, just leaving it in there, and you'll see when you pull it out, it's actually beginning to get its latex coating as the latex is, the um, fluid from the latex is being sucked into there. Latex, incidentally, is a water dispersion. Right, we'll give that a few minutes and then we'll pull it back out. So I've given it a couple of minutes and as we can see, the hand has actually got a really nice coating of latex on it. We just let that latex drip off and then we can turn it upside down and put it to dry. Now I've only given it a couple of minutes. So that latex layer is gonna be glove thin. If you want to do a permanent mold, the longer you leave it, the thicker that latex layer is gonna be. And it, remember, it works because the plaster of Paris is dry. So if your plaster of Paris is wet, it won't do this either. It'll just lay on the top, but that's actually okay because another way to apply this isn't just dipping it, you can actually paint it on. You can paint it on, you can spray it on, you can pour it on, you can dip it like this. The beauty of the dry plaster of Paris is it just sucks everything in there and then the coat layer is dependent on the time that you leave it to dip. So obviously I've given this a couple of minutes, I'm going to get a latex glove thin layer, and then we can just put it somewhere and that latex will now dry in air. Okay, so we've given that enough time to dry and as you can see it's gone from that creamy sort of white colour to this sort of very yellow colour. And it's quite thick and ready to peel off, but it will stick to itself. <coughs> it doesn't do later when it's actually um, a bit more set, but at this stage it will. So the easy answer to that? Put a lot of baby powder on it. So we get that uh, powdered up, then it won't stick to itself and we can peel it off quite easily. And also it smells quite nice. So we put some baby powder on and then it's ready to take off. Okay. 
Okay, so once we've pulled it off, that's what we get. There's the original and there's the actual uh, latex. Now, it is a perfect fit glove, of course, because it's just a copy of my hand. So, of course, my hand will go into it beautifully and we've got ourselves our own glove. Now, I did it that way because my friend has a problem with uh, getting gloves that fit. So, obviously, we've got a nice glove that fits absolutely perfectly. But there's still a hundred things you can do with this. I mean, right there, we've made something that could be part of a costume. As the latex obviously is quite sticky before you put the talcum powder on it, so you could put anything you wanted on there to make it a costume hand. Uh, clearly you don't have to do uh, body parts, although if you want individual fitting things for your various body parts, it's obviously a way to make those unique items that you might want. But you can uh, do stuff like take a master of something into the alginate, make a plaster cast, then you make a silicon, and this, remember, can be then a mould that will produce two, three, four hundred parts, depending on how you actually do it. So you could mould absolutely everything. We use Plaster of Paris, you could use resin. So as a technique for um, making something like gloves or moulds or parts, I, I think it's a tremendously useful, actually, uh, and well worth running through if you have quite a lot of things that you want to make, or if you want to make specialist stuff that really fits perfectly to... Um, your dimensions. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please remember to like and subscribe.